Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with an original book tag. So this is going to be the Six Musical book tag. And in case you haven't heard of it, Six is a musical that is basically all about the wives of Henry VIII. And the premise of the musical is that these six women are coming together and trying to decide who's going to be the leader of their girl group, and so each of them gets a song to try and convince the others that they were the worst treated by Henry. It's fabulous, um, it's basically my new favorite obsession, and I will be sure to leave the information about the creators of the musical in the description box as well. I also want to mention that this tag is co-created with the wonderful Hannah from Snow White Reader. She was a huge help when I was trying to decide on some of these questions and just kind of get inspiration from different songs and everything, and she was also the one who introduced me to the musical, so full credit to her for that. And you'll see as we get into some of the questions that several of these specifically ask for female authors, but I would also encourage you to maybe highlight some favorite women authors uh, for some of the other questions that don't ask for that specifically as well. Even though it was definitely important for writers of all genders to write interesting and complex women, um, I think this could be a great opportunity to highlight some female authors who maybe don't get as much attention as they deserve. So let's get into the tech. I'm pretty excited about this. Number one is Ex-Wives, a female-centered retelling or reimagining. If you don't read a lot of retellings, this can be a non-fiction book, a historical fiction book, anything like that. I'm going to go with one of my favorite books from this year so far, and that is Sherwood by Megan Spooner. This obviously is a female-centered retelling of Robin Hood, in which Maid Marian actually takes on the persona of Robin Hood after Robin is killed fighting in the Crusades. And I absolutely adored this book. I loved the look at Marian's character and about kind of the really creative and interesting things that Megan did with the Robin Hood story and with the characters within it, like some of the characters that we know and love are very different but still somehow very true to who they are in of the original or in many of the retellings, and I really enjoyed it. I can see why this book would be kind of polarizing. Um, it definitely seems to get very mixed reviews so far, but it's one of my favorite things I have read this year. Number two is No Way, a character with strong convictions whom you admire. And once again, I'm going to go with one of my favorite books of the year <laughs> so far, and that is Zainab from Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali. She is such an incredible main character. I talked about in my wrap-up how she's one of those protagonists where you read the book and you're like, God, I hope she'd be my friend, you know? Um, Zainab just, she is so passionate about what she believes in, in her fight for equality and in her, her anger about the bigotry and the suffering in the world. In spite of some of the some of the times where she doubts herself, where she wants to come off as more appealing and she wonders about if she's being too off-putting when she is so passionate about what she believes in, she never backs down from it. She has her core beliefs that she feels very strongly and I just admire that so much. Number three is Don't Lose Your Head, a character who makes terrible choices, but you can't help but love them or sympathize with them. I'm going to go with one from a book I'm actually currently reading at the time of filming this, and that is Kath or Catherine from Heartless by Marissa Meyer. So she's the main character, and we know that this is a prequel. She is going to become the Queen of Hearts, and it's so interesting. Like, there are so many times where I want to yell at Catherine to, like, just do what makes her happy, to do the choice that she feels is right, even though she is put upon by all of these people who supposedly want the best for her. But at the same time, even though it's so frustrating knowing that these things are probably going to hurt her down the road, I understand why, why she doesn't make the choice that she wants to make, you know? I understand her feeling like she owes something to people in this book, and I think that's one of the reasons I'm enjoying this book, even though it's really upsetting seeing that happen sometimes. Number four is Heart of Stone, a non-canon OTP of yours, or a canon one that you didn't think got enough page time. And if you don't read books with romance, choose a character that you think just didn't get enough time in the book. And I'm going to go with a side relationship from The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Walwork, and I actually mentioned this um, when I talked about the book, I think for my favorites of the year or something, but there is this side character relationship that I love so much, and I love the main characters and their relationship too, but there's just something about these side characters that like I loved every time they were together, and I wish we'd gotten more of that, even though I, I do think we get like a satisfying arc for them. And I'm deliberately not saying which characters they are, because I think part of the enjoyment for me about these characters was going into the book and not being 100% sure if they were going to be a thing, you know, like wondering if I was reading too much into it. Um, that's kind of one of my favorite uh, relationship experiences, I guess, in books, is when I, it's like so subtly built up that I'm like, am I like in misinterpreting things? Like, is this actually going to happen? And then it happens and it's great.
Number five is House of Holbein, which is what I call the Eurovision song. And that is to name a female authored work that you read in translation. And this is probably not going to be a surprise because I've been pretty vocal about my love for this series um, and how I wish more people would read it. And that is The Red Abbey Chronicles by Maria Turchaninoff, translated by A.A. A. Prime. This is a really powerful feminist fantasy series. This is Maurice Red Mantle, which is the third and at the moment final book in the series. Um, I actually just finished this and I adored it. It might be it might be my favorite in the series so far. Um, it's just such a powerful story about women working together and about being there being different ways to be a strong woman and to achieve happiness and to be fulfilled. Um, and there, it, there's so many themes about like the people that we love and how they don't really leave us. Um, like there's so much about family. The different cultures and belief systems in this world overlap in such a beautiful way and I just think the world building in this series is really strong and I just I can't say enough wonderful things about it. Um, I might actually do a full review on the series so I can actually express more coherently all of the things that I love about it, but I think this is a fantastic series and I think the, if you're worried about going into this one because it is translated, like maybe you haven't read too many translated works before, I think this would be a great one to start with because like the writing is so good, like the author and the translator did such a good job of making it not feel like it is a translated work, which I think is how the best ones should feel. Um, it's just a fantastic series. There are quite a few content warnings. I will list all the ones that I remember in the description box, um, but it is a very heavy series at times, but I think ultimately a really uplifting and powerful one as well. Number six is probably my favorite song in the whole cast recording or the whole album, and that is Get Down. And for this one, you just have to name a character that you'd like to get down with. Interpret that how you will. Hang out with, party, date, marry, whatever. And I'm actually going to go with Henry Crawford from Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Not because I think he would be like a good boyfriend or even necessarily a good friend, but I just think he'd be a lot of fun to go to a party with or to hang out with or to like flirt with in a casual kind of way. Like he's not reliable at all. So like, nothing serious at all. But um, yeah, I just think he'd, he'd be like really good for this. He'd be a lot of fun to just like have around, like have at a party situation. I think he'd be a really entertaining guest. He can definitely be very charming when he wants to be. With Henry, it isn't easy. His temper's short and his mates are sleazy. Except for this one Cartier, he's a really nice guy, just so sincere. Number seven is All You Want to Do, a book that would have been much better without the romance. Or alternatively, a female character that you think was unfairly defined by her romantic relationships. I'm going to go for the first option, and that is Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. This book was really doing the rounds a few years ago on booktube, and I ended up really enjoying it. It took me a little while to get into the writing style, but after that I really loved the feminist message and the characters, and seeing these girls like gradually band together and decide like, no, enough is enough, we're ending sexism at our school. Um, it was just really a wonderful book, but one of the things that I did not like about it, one of the only things actually, is the romantic relationship between our main character and this guy at her school. It's not, like, I understand his purpose in the book, like, there are some elements that I think he served as a useful vehicle for, if you want to, if you want to put it like that, but I do think the book could have been fine without him. Like, every time we would have scenes with him, I'm like, this is fine, but can we get back to the women, like, smashing the patriarchy, please? Like, that's what I signed up for. Number eight is I Don't Need Your Love. Share a seriously underrated female author. And I came up with multiple answers for this one because of course I did. The first one I'm gonna go with is Anna Meriano. She is writing the Love Sugar Magic series. I just read A Sprinkle of Spirits this last month and loved it even more than the first book. There is baking magic and a Mexican-American family and just wonderful relationships between sisters and family members and friends and a lot of serious topics too about loss and about just like family relationships in general. I just love this series so much and it's so underrated. I think book two had like less than a hundred ratings on Goodreads or something and that is unacceptable. I also want to mention Tasha Suri who wrote Empire of Sand last year. Um, thank you again Jocelyn for like pointing me towards this book. She's been doing so much work trying to get people to uh, learn more about this series and the second book actually comes out in this year, I think November, and it is just such a wonderful desert fantasy series. Definitely a slow burning kind of series. Um, the writing is fantastic, the world building is so complex and well thought out. You can tell that Tasha Suri spent a lot of time thinking about the political implications of her characters and of their choices and I just love that. Um, I love Mare, our main character herself, and Amun as well is just wonderful. Um, I love both of them and their relationship so much. I also want to mention Rachel Hartman, who wrote the Serafina books and Tess of the Road. I am anxiously awaiting news of the sequel for that book, which I hope we get soon. Um, but she is just one of the most talented authors I think I've ever read from. Like, her ability to balance 
believable but powerful dialogue and the beautiful descriptions without going over the top and again with the complex world building and especially with the way that dragons interact with this world and the way that they see each other and see humans I just think is so fantastic and this is a really diverse world in every sense of the word. We have characters of different races and ethnicities and sexualities and even species because again dragons are a part of it and I think that is all handled in such a thoughtful and inclusive way and her main characters themselves like Serafina and Tess I just adore them with all my heart and I just want them to be happy. Um, these books, especially Test of the Road, there are some pretty serious um, content warnings that I would give for that one. Again, I'll try to li list those in the description if I remember them, but Test of the Road was one of my favorite books of last year. I actually did a whole review on it that I will link. Um, it's spoiler free, but Tess is just, oh, she still has my heart. Like, I read that book more than a year ago and I still think about it all the time. And finally, the last one on my list for this question is Megan Morrison. She wrote the Time series. Um, this is another one I'm actually thinking of doing a full series review on because I love it so much. Um, she writes fairy tale retellings and I think she does an amazing job of incorporating real world issues with the this fantasy world um, and again like the character arcs of each of her main characters because it's a companion series so we follow a different character um, for each book although I do recommend reading them in order um, but the character arcs for all of them especially for Rapunzel and for Syra the ones in the first and the third book it's just so incredible to see like I think a lot of people got put off from the first book because Rapunzel does start out a very naive and frustrating character but it didn't bother me because I knew why she was the way she was and I could see that she was going to have this really amazing arc and that is what happened and just Megan Morrison is such a talented author and she's another one where I think the most recent book in her series has barely any reviews like possibly less than 50 or something like that um so I just I highly recommend the series and again I will have a review for it coming out soon because I just need more time to gush about it And finally, number nine is six. Tell us about one of your favorite fictional girl squads or female friendships. And once again, I have two answers for this. One, a more recent one, and that is The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher. This is a Bluebeard retelling, and so the women in this book are really, they're more of the like bonded by hardship or trauma variety, um, but seeing them get to know each other and to rely on each other and to change the way they think about each other was just a really enjoyable aspect of this book. Like I love this book overall, but one of the things I loved most about it was seeing Rhea, our main character, get to know and connect with these other women. And then my other answer is the three main characters from The Nowhere Girls by Amy Reed. This is again a very serious and hard-hitting book because the three main characters actually come together in order to get justice for a girl who was raped who used to go to their school and basically got run out of town because nobody believed her. Um, so again like serious content warnings for this but it's such a powerful book and the three girls are all very different. I think it's a very diverse main cast in a way that doesn't feel, you know, the author's just like checking diversity boxes kind of thing. One of the main characters is on the autism spectrum, one of them is plus sized, and one of them is a lesbian and Mexican-American and it's just so wonderful to see them get to know each other and get to bond with each other and to see them come together in order to protect this other girl was just a really powerful experience for me and I do highly recommend that book. Okay everybody, so that was the sixth musical book tag. Um, I vaguely mentioned on Twitter that I was doing something like this, so I will tag all the people that I mentioned in that tweet. Um, I'll actually tag them on Twitter and then here I'll tag a few more people who I don't think are on Twitter who I think might have a good time doing this. And if I didn't tag you, you are still 100% welcome and encouraged to do this tag. Um, you don't have to know the musical in order to do this tag, although I highly encourage uh, listening to it. I think that I'm pretty sure it's on like music streaming websites now. I ended up just buying the album from iTunes because I loved it so much. I'll be buying like a physical copy of the CD as well when it eventually gets released in the US because I'm just so passionate about this show and it's funny because in a way it should be sad because we know what happened to all of these women and so many of them had tragic ends because of just because of the fact that Henry VIII decided like yeah I want you you're gonna marry me but it's still somehow very uplifting like that last song six is talking about how like how their lives could have been different if they hadn't met Henry like all of the things they could have accomplished and become known for and even though that, more than anything, sounds like it should be a very sad and melancholy song, somehow it isn't. It's very inspiring and uplifting, and I think there's still something to be said that at least they're getting their time to shine now. Like, we have a whole musical about them, and Henry doesn't even get a song. And I love that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!